As directed by our beloved Pastor Halley, Refuel Wednesday Bible Study times will be starting earlier so that corporate prayer can be conducted. Noon Bible Study will commence at 11.45 a.m. and Night Bible Study will commence at 6.45 p.m. Please note these changes. See you there on next Wednesday. Get refueled, come in empty, and leave out full of the Word from God. Thought for the Week Thankfulness is foundational to the Christian life. Thankfulness is conscious response that comes from looking beyond our blessings to their source. As Christians, we have been forgiven, saved by death, and adopted as God's children. There could be no greater reason for a grateful heart. We have been healed and made whole by the Savior. We are free to enjoy the abundant life the Savior has graciously given us. We should not rush off so quickly to glory in our blessings without stopping to thank our Redeemer. God looks for our thanks. Our worship, prayers, service, and daily life ought to be saturated with thanksgiving to God. Have a blessed week.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a praise this morning. How many of you know that he's a way maker? He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. I wish somebody would just shout out into the atmosphere this morning. Shout it out. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Yeah, yeah. That's who you are. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands in worship this morning. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Singing it to the atmosphere changes. Waymaker, miracle worker. The darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, men, every heart. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Waymaker, 
miracle worker. Miracle worker. Miracle worker. Miracle worker. Somebody needs a miracle out there this morning. Miracle worker. Miracle worker. Word of God says you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in dark places. That's who you are. Somebody give God a shout of praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. We are excited uh, that you thought enough of us uh, to join us for uh, this worship service. We are glad uh, that you have chosen this church to fellowship with this morning. We are exponentially clear uh, that you had other options, uh, but we thank you. God, that you uh, chose to be with us this morning. Uh, we want to thank all of those again who uh, participate and make sure that our worship services continue to move as planned. Uh, our media team, musicians, uh, praise, uh, singers, everyone assist in ensuring uh, that our worship continues to move uh, even uh, though we are not able to meet in person and I am thankful uh, as pastor to all of them uh, that give of their time and their talent to ensure that the word of God that the fellowship of God of the saints together continues to if you brought your Bibles with you this morning, turn to the 88th Psalm, Psalm 88. Psalm 88, beginning at verse 1. Psalm 88 and 1. I'll read the psalm in its entirety. If you look there, you'll find these words recorded. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of trouble, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more. And they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit in darkness in the deep. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all of thy ways, say thou. Thou hast put away my acquaintances far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up. I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by re reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Say thou. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness, but unto thee I have cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why 
hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath go, goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me and my acquaintances into darkness. That first verse again says, O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee and climb thy ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of trouble, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. The grass withers, and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For just a few minutes, I want to talk to you this morning from these words, three feet from gold. Three feet All right. from gold. Now, I need your prayers and I need your amens this morning. All right. And I can, I can hear you from your living room or your car. I can feel it. So make sure you give them to me this morning. All right, all right. Three feet yeah. from gold. Yeah. The story is told of a gentleman who was mining for gold in Colorado. After taking all of his resources, his money, his time, his talent, and putting it all into this tract of land that he, that he purchased in order to mine gold. Several days went by him working day in and day out, but still no gold. Several weeks pass by. Frustration begins to set in his life, but still no gold. Yeah. Months roll by. He's, he's exasperated by now, but still no gold. Yeah. He continues to dig and to trudge away, but with each day that passes, with each week that rolls on, with each month that shows up, he begins to continuously find himself frustrated because there's no goal. At his wit's end, finally having decided I'm, I've done all that I can do, it's time to throw in the towel. He, decides to sell all of his equipment, sell the plot of land, and life moves on. Yeah. Well, in this story this morning, in this song, we have a miner who is troubled with life, and every time he digs, every time he tries to find some strength to continue to move on, in life, AP, he finds yeah, yeah. no goal. Yeah. At, at every turn in life, at every twist in life, with every push ahead, he finds himself more and more frustrated with life because he's found yeah. no, no goal. Yeah. I, I need you this morning to open up your spiritual minds and not Think about gold in terms of, of, of material or financial gain, but there are many situations in our lives where we find ourselves pushing forward and when we take three steps forward, it seems like life knocks us four steps backward. When we try to do everything earthly possible to do the right thing, to do it the godly way, it seems like life just shows its 
ugly head and we don't find gold. We, yeah. we don't find the, the gold of peace. We don't find the gold of, of rest. We don't find the gold yeah. of a healthy body. We don't find the gold of a peaceful home. We don't find the gold of a great spouse. We don't find the gold of wonderful children. It seems yeah. like the yeah. more we find no gold. Yeah, yeah. The psalmist is troubled because his life seems to be full of trouble. No good things going on around him. Everything he sees is trouble. We, we don't know the root of his trouble, but we know that at least from verse 15, he declares, I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth. Literally, this psalmist has been troubled in life from childhood. And he said to himself, I've been digging, I've been running, I've been pushing, I've been straining, but I found no good. Life, my brothers and my sisters, will at times seem more difficult than we can bear. It's, it's not all roses. It's not always the sun on your face. It's not always the wind on your back. Some days will be rough. Some weeks will be rough. Some months will be rough. 2020 has shown that there might be some rough years, but I declare to you, keep on pushing because you never know. You might just be a few feet away from your breakthrough. You might just be a few feet away from your healing. You might just be a few feet away from your peace. You might just be a few feet away from your love. You might just be a few feet away from gold. This young man, this man in the song understands that my life is troubled every time I turn around I'm experiencing trouble but may I declare to you this morning that someone might be making the same declaration this morning that when I like Paul when I would do good evil was always present when I tried my best someone else was trying worse to despise, to bring down what the Lord is trying to do in me. But when, if you are turning around and all you see is trouble, may I declare this morning that you need to learn how to keep turning because at least God is giving you the strength. At least God is giving you the wherewithal to keep turning around. This man turns around and every twist and every turn, he finds himself in trouble. He cries to the Lord, Lord, I need you. I, I've done all that I can do. I've tried in my way. I spent all of my money. I, I've searched for friends and they've left me. I've searched for family and they're nowhere to be found. It feels like I'm walking dead, literally. I'm alive, but I have no life. He's troubled by his future. It's devastating. He, he doesn't have any friends. He, he doesn't have any family. He doesn't for seemingly have any sure or solid foundation to stand on. And he continues to cry out to the Lord. If you want to know, uh, if you want to know uh, how to continue to search for gold when you've exhausted all of your resources, expended all of your energy, you've got to learn to have some persistent prayer. That's how you can continue to move forward even when you have not found gold. This psalmist, yeah, yeah. throughout the whole psalm, even though he can find no gold, says, I will continue to be persistent in my prayer. Yes. God, I'm calling out to you. I, I'm longing for you. I, I am troubled, but I believe, God, that you can do exceedingly and 
abundantly right. more than I could ask or think. God, you can do anything but fail. Right, right. With all of his problems, with all of his issues, this psalmist continues to cry out to the Lord. He starts out in verse 1. He says, Oh Lord of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. He has a persistent prayer life. He says, my, my circumstance is not changing, but I will continue right. to lift my eyes, God, to you. Right, right. we got to learn that when we're searching for gold, we yeah. have to continue to have a persistent prayer life. That's, that's a message that we've got to declare to our young people today. Listen, everything will not go your way. You're going to have some ups in life. Right. But you're also going to have some downs. Yeah. You're going to win some days, but then you're going to lose others. Some, right. some months you're going to feel like you're riding on cloud nine. And then there are going to be other months where you feel like there are no clouds to even ride on. That's life, y'all. But what we've got to learn how to do is be persistent. In our prayer life, God, I don't like where I am. I don't like the situation that's around me. I don't like my circumstance. I don't like what I'm going through. But God, I'm remaining persistent in my prayer life. Yeah, yeah. Paul says it like this, I learned to be content. Yeah. In whatever situation I found, I find myself in. If I got a pocket of money, I'm content. If I have lit in my pocket, I'm content. Yeah. We've got to learn to have a persistent prayer life because it is through a persistent prayer life that it is where we learn how to trust God. Yeah, yeah. This man who's walking through life, yeah. trouble all around him, no family, no friends, seemingly no good in his life says I'm not going to commit my life to my problems but I'm going to commit my life to a problem solver that is God right 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 I don't like it trouble back but I'm committing myself to God he has a persistent prayer life. Listen, look at how he prays in his persistent prayer. He prays faithfully. Verse 1, I haven't left it yet. He says, I cried yeah. day and night. Yeah, yeah. He says, you got to be faithful in your prayer life day and night. I don't care what it is, if the sun is out, or if it's raining, he says, you've got to learn to talk to the Lord day and night. Right, right. First thing when you get up, last thing when you lay down, and all in between, we've got to learn how to talk to the Lord. Listen, you don't need, I say this all the time, you do not need any ecclesiastical communication to talk to God. Just tell God how you feel. Right, right. I'm troubled, I'm bothered, I'm hurt, I'm afflicted, I'm, I'm in darkness, I feel like I have no family, I feel like I have no friends, I, I'm alive but I'm not living, God. Yeah, yeah. And I'm talking to you because I, I want you to hear my prayer. Don't give up in your prayer life. Don't give up on God because he has not given up on you. Not only, not only does he pray faithfully, but he prays fervently. Yeah. Literally, verse 1, he said, I, I have cried. Yeah. And that Hebrew word that gives the connotation of a loud shout or a shriek is not some whisper to God. It is a troubling prayer. Lord, I am in trouble. I need you, yeah. not, 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 not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Right. God, I need right. you right today. Right now, yeah, yeah. Right now in yeah. my circumstance, right now in my situation, right now in my marriage, right now on my 
my job right now, with my children right now, in my church right now, in my finances right now, with my help. God, I need you right now. Yeah, yeah. It is a fervent prayer. It is literally the picture of a child reaching out for a parent. Yeah. A child that is in despair, a child that does not know what to do and longing for that parent to save them, to rescue them. And I've got a question this morning. Is there anybody here that needs God to rescue you? Yeah. Is there anyone here that needs God to, yeah. to save you? Is there anyone here that right. needs God to give you a little strength, a little patience, a little perseverance to run on and yeah. press for the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says I pray fervently. Right. It's not some emotional wrap up with God. Yeah. yeah. He said, I'm meaning this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to impress anybody. Yeah. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. Yeah. I'm not trying to make myself feel good. It's me, oh Lord, I need you right now. Yeah. He says, you've got to learn if you're going to push toward getting your gold. Yeah. You've got to learn how to have a persistent prayer life. But not only must you have a persistent prayer life, you have to learn how to have some passionate perseverance. We find that when he, he starts, gets into about verse 4, as he says, I, I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou Remember us no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit in darkness, in the deep thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy ways. Literally, this man says, I shouldn't still be living. Yeah, yeah. Lord have mercy, you missed right, the shout. Right. He said, There is nothing about what's going on in my life that I should still have breath in my body. But I've got some passionate perseverance that says, God, even though you aren't talking to me right now, I'm going to continue to talk to you because I want to find my goal. I, I want my deliverance. I want these bonds uh, broken from my life. I want shackles removed from my life. I've got a passionate Don't always look good, smell good, taste good, feel good, but God, I need to run. Yeah. And may I declare to these uh, pseudo sophisticated, such and much Christians yeah. that declare, uh, uh, you ain't tired yet mm -hmm. on this journey. That might be because you ain't running. You ain't working. Yeah, yeah. Because on this journey, you will get tired. On this journey, you will want to throw in the towel. On this journey, you will ask God why. On this journey, you will ask the Lord how much longer. On this journey, you will declare, I'm ready to quit. But you've got to have some passionate perseverance that says, I'm not giving up because God has not up on me. Right, right, right. Psalmist says, I'm, I'm yelling out to God. I don't hear him talking about, yeah. but I'm clear that he's there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm clear uh, that, that he's listening to my prayer. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, sometimes a prayer delayed or an answered prayer delayed yeah. does not mean that, it, that the answer to that prayer 
has been denied. Right, right. It, it just means we've got to learn to wait on God. Right, right. It means we have to learn how to trust God's plan. It, it means we've got to learn how to put things in God's hands. If the birds of the air don't worry about how they're going to clothe themselves, where they're going to lay their head, what they're going to eat, how much more does your heavenly father, is your heavenly father concerned about you? There's some burdens in life that we've got to let aside. Right, right, right. Let God handle God's business. Right, right. Let God be God. Yeah. So that you can have some passionate perseverance and run on in life. But AP, the reality is, yeah. sometimes, man, you just get sick and tired. Right, right. <laughs> sometimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right, yeah. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, uh, uh, my, my, my super saiyan saints don't have an issue with this one, but that's all right. Write me a letter. Oh, <laughs> uh, my. Sometimes you have an E40 moment and you are just dusty and disgusting. You, yeah, you, yeah. you're sick of life and, and yeah. you don't know what to do, where to go, who to turn to. May I declare that God is not insulted by your question? Get outside in your backyard, beat on the tree, look up at the sky and say, Lord, I need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, um, don't know if I caused it or if it's just life. Yeah. But I'm, I'm crying out to you, God. I need you to work a miracle in my life. Yeah. We got to come to the realization, my brothers and my sisters, that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God does not maneuver like we think he ought to maneuver. But when we come out on the other side of what we've gone through, we can declare that it was only by God's grace and God's mercy right. that I was able to make it through. When I look back over my life, Brother Randall, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony, wisdom uh, that walks you through life and shows you some things, says it was not my strength, it was not my intelligence, it was not my money, but it was God that got me through. He has a persistent perseverance. Uh, his, his situation seems to be extreme. Verse 6, it, it seems to be inexplicable. It seems to be humiliating. It seems to be severe. It seems to be exhaustive. But, but here's the good news of the text that, that while my brothers and my sisters, things seem to be extreme, the situation is really like, wow, things seem to be inexplicable. They're really according to the word and the will of God. Uh, while they seem to be humiliating, they're really elevating. While they seem to be severe, they're really gentle. While, while they seem to be exhaustive, they're really just partial. Uh, Y'all looking at me kind of strange, like I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, uh. Our afflictions that we go through, I'm yet but for a moment. And, and Romans 8 and 28 tells us that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. What you're going through has purpose behind it. God is trying to push you. He's trying to propel you. He's trying to elevate you to your next level. And, and listen, may I declare that there is gold on the other side. You just got to keep pushing. You have to keep pursuing God. You have to keep understanding that it's not, uh, it's only uh, a setback. It's, it, it doesn't mean I, 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 I got to give up. It does not mean that I have to throw in the towel. It just means that something life has thrown a brick a stumbling block in the way and I've got to learn to use my stumbling blocks and my bricks to build my home for the future. God yeah. expects 
for us to continue to push forward. God expects us uh, to keep trudging, keep digging, keep plowing, keep pushing. It's, it's not going to be easy. Oh, but, but may I declare with God on your side, anything is possible. You, you cannot give up. You have to continue to fight. I love that movie Red Tails about the Tuskegee Airmen. And there's a line or a scene in that movie that I, I really love, Red. Oh, they, they say these, they have this mantra that they, they, they yell out. They said, nothing's difficult. Everything's a challenge through adversity. Yeah. To the stars, to the last plane, to the last bullet, to the last minute, to the last man. Uh, Brother Randall, here's where it gets real good. They say, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight. My brothers and my sisters, that's what we've got to learn to do in life. Keep on fighting. Keep on pushing. Keep on pursuing. Keep on prevailing because God has your back. The psalmist says, I don't see nothing but, but bad around me. Yeah. Oh, but I'm, I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to, I'm going to keep on digging because uh, uh, there's gold on the other side. But then you also got to remember while you're going through life that you cannot, G, stop praising. This is the most difficult part about being a child of God, going through issues, experiencing life, whatever those issues might be, is that we've got to learn how to continue uh, to praise God. The psalmist even has sense enough to open up like that. He says, oh Lord God of my salvation. He's got sense enough to praise God even in the midst of his mess. He says, uh, you have to continue to praise God. Yeah. You've got a reason to rejoice. Yeah. No matter how dark the valley, uh -huh. praise God. Yeah. No matter how, no matter how deep the trial, praise God. Yeah. No matter how difficult the way, praise God. God. Yeah. You, you gotta you gotta praise your way through it. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, because somebody is watching you. Uh -huh. yeah. And when you come out on the other side, yeah. they'll wanna know how did you make it through? Yeah. How did you keep smiling yeah. uh, when your marriage was falling apart? How uh, did you keep loving those unlovable children? Yeah. How did you keep on pushing on a job where your co-workers, your boss, and everybody else gets on your nerves? Yeah. How, uh, how were you able to shout while you were in the hospital? Yeah. Uh, how were you able to move on when you got a pink slip on your job. Yeah. Uh, you can declare, I never stop praising him. Yeah. I praise him for not only uh, what he is doing, yeah. but I praise him for what he has done. Yeah. God has been good to me. Yeah. God uh, has shown up been good to me. Yeah. And when I look back over things over. Yeah. I, I can truly say that I have a testimony. Yeah. Uh, praise him while you're going through. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got a little excited. I wasn't ready to go there yet, but but uh, you gotta you gotta keep praising God. Yeah. You have to learn how to praise him in the midst of your pain. Yeah. Praise will not 
do away with your pain. Yeah. But praise will bring you into the presence of God. Yeah. And when you're in the presence of God, praise will anesthetize your pain. Yeah. Let me see if I can help you a little bit when you when you're getting ready uh, to have any kind of surgery. Yeah. The, the anesthesiologist comes in and they they shoot uh, something yeah. in your IV right. Right. that yeah. that numbs your body. Right. Right. Uh, it makes you forget about what's getting ready to happen or yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Well, well, that's what the presence of God will do. Right. Right. It, it won't take the pain away, right. Right. but it'll make you forget about it. Right. Just for a moment, you can shout through your pain. Right. And, and you can worship through your word. Right. Because you are in the presence of God. Yeah. And being in the presence of God makes everything, my brothers and my sisters, all right. Yeah. We have learned how to continue to praise God. Yeah. AP, I was troubled because Psalm. 88 does not end well. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 yeah. ends this song. Yeah. And he said, Lover and friend, hast thou put far from me yeah. and mine acquaintances into the darkness. Yeah. Uh, this song doesn't end well. Yeah. There is no positive outcome my Lord, my for Lord. this song. Oh, but I'm I'm glad yeah, yeah. that the book of Psalms yeah. does not yeah. end with Psalm 88. Right, right. You gotta keep on digging. Right, right. There's some gold right, right, right. on the other side. Right. I'm glad Psalm 88 does not end the book of Psalms. Right. But you gotta keep digging. And you'll find some gold. Yeah. Cause Psalm 145 yeah. says, I will extol thee, my God. Uh -huh. And I will bless thy name forever. Yeah. Uh, you're starting to get to some gold. Yeah. Psalm 146 says, While I live, will I praise thee, yeah. Lord? Yeah. You're starting to get to some gold. I'm glad that Psalm 88 does not end the song. Right. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, I forgot to tell you the rest of the story yeah. that, that I opened up with. Uh -huh. That miner uh, that sold all of his equipment, right. sold all of his land, yeah. sold it uh, to someone who then did some investigation. Right. Uh, they right. went and got a surveyor yeah. and said I bought this land from this man right. he's been digging for days weeks months and years yeah. but he found no gold right. Right. is it worth me buying this property yeah. the uh. surveyor declared these words yeah. Yeah. said all you need to do yeah. is dig three more feet yeah. and you will find yeah. Uh, just when you thought it was over, you threw in the top, yeah. and you didn't know you were three feet from gold. Yeah. Just when you turned your attention away from the Lord, yeah. just when you gave up on the life, yeah. you didn't know you were three feet from gold. Right, right. And here's what I came to tell you this morning. Keep on digging. Keep on fighting. Keep on pushing. Keep on moving. Because you're nothing but three feet away from gold. How do I know you're only three feet away from gold? Because the battle has already been won. The hole has already been dug. Uh, victory is already mine. How do I know victory is mine? Oh, 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 my Savior marched up the Via Del Rosa to a hill 
called Calvary. He didn't want to keep going because in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, if it be thy will, let this come back. But he kept on digging. He kept on pushing. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me and you, he did die. But thank God, that's not where the story is. They buried him in a bar or two. He stayed there all night, uh, Friday night. All morning, Friday morning. All afternoon, uh, all afternoon, Saturday afternoon. All night, Saturday night. Oh, but here's where the story gets good. Early Sunday morning, we got up with all power in his hand. And because he does, because he pushed, because he moved, I, uh, my goal is three feet away. The victory is already won. The victory is already mine. The battle is already won. For I hear him declare, oh, death, where is your sin? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The battle is already won. What's up to me and you to do is to keep on running. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. If you're three feet from God, don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel now. I know it's rough. I know it's difficult. It seems like. There's no happy ending to the story. Right. But without Psalm 88, there can be no Psalm 121. Yeah. It says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Yeah. From whence cometh my help. Yeah. My help comes from the Lord. Yeah. Just keep pushing. Right. Keep moving. Keep trudging. Keep digging. Bloody knuckles. Yeah. Tears running down your face. Sweat on your brow. Yeah. Feet tired, back hurting. Mm. Heart hurting, mind in trouble. You got three more feet to go. Yeah. And your gold is on the other side. I'm not talking about, again, financial gain. While that could be it. Yeah. But your breakthrough is coming. Yeah. Your situation is going to turn. It won't always be cloudy days, rainy days. Bust through that hole. It makes no sense yeah. for you to do all and somebody else come along and get your gold. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, that's what I offer you this morning. The gold of Jesus Christ. Or the gold of God which is found through Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's a relationship with him. That somehow, some way out, AP, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. But with life against you, somehow, some way, you still make it. Yeah. 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 That's what a relationship with God through Jesus Christ does. Yeah. Gives you some sustaining power. Some pushing power, some yeah. pulling power, some perseverance in your prayer life. Yeah. Three feet from gold. God's not just going to drop it in your lap. You got to make the decision for yourself. That I'm pushing forward and I, 
know I gotta push forward with you, God. So I need a relationship with you. That's what I offer you this morning. A relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. He says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that he is Lord and Savior, Son of the living God. You shall be saved. That's where it starts. Then he said, I, I'm not just saving you for saving sake. I, I'm not just saving you to sit down in the pew and look good, dress pretty. He said, I, I'm saving you that you might go tell others the story. Now I want to make you a disciple. Yeah. Will you do that? I can't make the decision for you. The person next to you can't make the decision for you. Your friends, your family can't make the decision for you. You got to make it for yourself. And while I would love for you to be a member of this church, I would love to be your pastor. What's even more important to me than that is that you are part of the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. That God is not just your God. That God is your Father. Blood Father. He cared enough about you. Why don't you come? Thank you, Lord, for Thank you. the one two, the three, the five, the ten that are saying to themselves right now, God, I want a relationship with you. And then maybe there are others who have that relationship, but there's a wedge that has been driven in between you and them, us and you. God, strengthen right now. Fortify, continue to bless us, God, like only you can bless. Pierce somebody's heart, mind. Show them that they need a relationship with you and then God, those troubled relationships. Strengthen them. Bring us back to you. God, many of us spend our whole lives being three feet away from the goal that you promised us. The goal of peace, the goal of joy, the goal of love, the goal of forgiveness, the goal of gold of justice, the gold of righteousness, three feet away from it. God, help us to push through that we might get to the goal that you have for our lives. We love you, we thank you. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm so glad you Again, you chose to join us this morning. Uh, come back next week, man. See us continue to pray for us and we continue to pray for you. And continue to encourage one another. Uh, love on one another. Uh, uh, distance hug each other. High five each other. Amen. And, and stay safe. Uh, and remember, I love you. And God does too. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forever. And they all say, Amen. God bless you, love you, see you next week.